and welcome to another RSR tonight. We are reviewing Real Esteli nil, Real España nil, cero a cero. In the first leg, partido Ida of the preliminary round, ronda pre preliminar of the 2022 Scotiabank CONCACAF League, Liga CONCACAF de Scotiabank 2022. Matches follows halftime, nil nil, mido tiempo, cero a cero. First half, Esteli controlled the pace, controlled the tempo for about the first 25 minutes. And then Espana started to grow into the game and play better in the second half of the first half, the last 20 minutes. They started looking a bit better. They started growing into the game and being not the better team, but getting onto a level footing with Real Esteli throughout that first half. So it was a very half-and-half -half match and a tale of two halves in the first half. Then, full-time, nil-nil, zero was zero. Then Espana starts to really take over in the second half. They were the better team in the second half. They honestly should have put a goal in. They had some great chances. Esteli had some good chances off the set pieces, but not really in direct play. In the run of play, it was more of the set pieces. But Espana, they had their chances. And Luis Lopez stands on his head to make this a draw, nil-nil. Defensively, well played by Espana. This is their first game since May, and you definitely could tell at the start. Real Esteli really wanted to jump down their throats early. They did. They just couldn't score. But the more fit and the longer the game went on for Real Espana, the better they played. They were not ready to start, but luckily enough, they did not pay for their late start playing the game the way they played it. They did not pay for their late start. They did not pay for around the 30th minute really waking up. It ended up working out for them defensively. They stood pat, and then they started to try to dominate the game. And getting a nil-nil draw in Esteli is a very good result for Espana. Is a very good result for them. And you would hope, if you're an Espana fan, you would hope that they don't have a disaster class the next match. They have all the momentum. Well, the way this match went, Espana has all the momentum in Honduras in the second leg next week. And luckily, we're going live for that one on Thursday. Because if it was Municipal Vega Real again, it would be a waste of time. Still got to review it because that's the Thursday game, the second game. But you know what? Oh, I'm going to regret it. I'll still do a review if it ends up needing to be reviewed. But I'm thinking double review, double live review for Real Esteli Espana. Because really, though. Marit not Mariton, Municipal, that tie is dead. If they somehow blow it, oh, I'll still do a, I'll do a double day, two reviews instead of two lives and one review. I'll do a live and two reviews if they do somehow blow it, but I just don't see it happening. Vega Real does not have those capacities. I may just do, I may just watch this. Sometimes you gotta use executive privileges. I think a live and review with this one of the second leg is probably better. Probably. I think I'd agree. Stats are as follows at full time. Eight shots to six. Five shots on goal to five. 46% possession to 54% possession. 231 passes to 279. 92% pass accuracy to 85% pass accuracy. 17 fouls to 13. Very chippy game. Zero offside to two. Four yellow cards to four. Zero red cards to zero. And one corner to four. Real Espana. If you're a Real Espana fan, you should feel really good about this performance and the position that they're in going back home in the second leg. This is a very good performance for a team who hasn't played since May. Three months. Two and a half, three months, give or take. They haven't played. This could have went horribly. It did not. It went great. It went probably the best you could have hoped for. They should have scored a goal or two, I think, personally. But this could have been the best that you would hope for. As a Espana fan, Real Esteli, it could have gone worse. 
How they didn't keep their foot on the gas pedal like they did the first 25 minutes of the match, I'll never know. How they didn't keep their foot on the gas pedal, I'll never know. You think they would have. They didn't. They just were there. Okay. They're fine with the draw at home, but here's the thing. I mean, I get away goals are worth more than home goals, technically. I get it. I get it. So technically, a nil-nil draw at home ain't bad for them either. But the way they played, luckily things didn't go completely south for them because it's like they stopped caring. It's like they were like, oh, if we don't score a goal by the 30th minute, we ain't scoring. It's They honestly gave up. No joke, they gave up. Except on the defending portion, but offensively they gave up. Like, they'll take their set pieces, but few and far between. Like, they let Espana hang in there and dominate the match from minute 30 on for like 60 minutes. They let him do that. You can't do that in a CONCACAF League game. That could come back to bite you in the ass a week from now. And if it does, you only have yourself to blame. Got to take this way more seriously. I expect better from Esteli. I know that they are a very good CONCACAF Central American club. Not exactly in the Champions League. We saw what happened against uh, Columbus. Columbus. They got whipped bad. We, we saw what happened there. But CONCACAF League-wise, Estelle is a pretty good club. They're not the greatest. They're not the worst. But they're definitely in there. They're in the mix. It's not like they're easily written off. They've been there every year except for 2018. And the year that they weren't there, Espana was in the tournament. Not like there was anything to... Like that was conditional. It just happened that way. But Espana should not be dictating the pace against a team who has this much experience. They've only had one tournament experience. Now they're second. That, and it will be the second. That's, that's it. Because this is the last CONCACAF league. With that being said, you have to look at it like, come on now, you should, you should dominate that match. Espana, off of two-month, three-month break, two-and-a-half-month, three-month break, basically wake up from a sleeping giant position and dominate this game away, no less. I gotta say, Esteli looks like they're in trouble. They either gotta come up with something masterful next week, or Spagna's gonna go through. And is it a upset? No, not really. Maybe by the history of being in the tournament, it is. But... Well, Espana is a Honduran club, but I'd say they're about the same level. It's not a crazy upset. I'll be wrong on one of my picks, but it's it's not a crazy upset. I could have seen this happening. I just thought Esteli would be better. I had more expectations for him. I'm a little bit disappointed. Man of the match for me, again, Luis Lopez stood on his head. Wonderful match by Lopez in goal. Again, if it's a nil-nil draw, I'll lean towards a goalkeeper. I'm not going to lie. Because made some good saves when he needed to. He made some good saves when he needed to. And still had to make some good saves even after Esteli weren't the dominant team. He had to do it intermittently throughout the match. So I'm going to say Lopez, Buba Lopez, Luis Lopez, man of the match. For me. With that being said, I just got to touch on this before I end this. Uh, CONCACAF League, round of preliminary round, first legs. Draw, 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 4 0 win, draw. 0 0, 1 1, 1 1, 0 0, 4 0, 0 0. There were eight goals scored in this these first legs, all six matches. Municipal scored half of the goals. Four, 50% of the goals were Municipals. The other four were two 1-1 one, one draws. Malacateco, Sporting San Miguelito, Aguila, and Alajolense. Hell, five out of eight were scored by Guatemalan clubs. 
Salvadoran one, Costa Rican one, Panamanian one. That's that's not good numbers. Almost. Thanks. <laughs> not that I bet on it, but I kind of wanted to see the six draw prophecy end up happening. And Municipal ended that. And your match isn't appetizing next week. Good for you. The rest of them are, except I'm only covering two out of six. Because Tuesday, Pacific Waterhouse, you know what we got to do. We got to do the double. The only reason I didn't do a RSR for them was because Toronto. Of course, that takes biggest priority. Wednesday, League's Cup Showcase. So, Johnny, for, y for you, I will be doing something better than CONCACAF League. Don't worry. And then Thursday, unless Municipal blow it, I think I'm just going to go with a live and RSR of the Esteli Espana game. That's the way it seems to me. So, Because that makes a lot more sense. A nil-nil draw that could go either way in one 90-minute run versus a game that's already over. Versus a tie that's already over unless some miraculous thing happens. I'll still watch it. Don't get me wrong. Just like I'll still watch Alajolense and Aguila. Because I at least need those for my recap the next Friday. Friday, not this Friday, next Friday. But, see what I could do with the other two, but I'll watch the highlights at least. And see how many predictions I got right in this first round, and then we'll predict the round of 16 as it would be on the card and from the actual results, and then there you go. And of course, Toronto on Saturday, and maybe I'll do Leon America on Sunday. Maybe, I'm considering it. So yeah, I just told you all next week, why not? But with that being said, if you like this video, like it, share, subscribe, you know what it is. Tell your friends, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification. Once you subscribe, send super chats on the live streams, comment on this video, put this in play, share some friends and family, all that great stuff. The next time you'll see me is on Saturday for a live watch along and review of New England Revolution versus Toronto FC. Can we bounce back and can we go on a hot run to get to the MLS Cup Final and win it and somehow make MLS have to make a decision and see if we could get into CCL that way. I'm not going to ride it off, especially since they're going to change the rules next year anyway. I'm not going to ride it off. 2019, I didn't ride it off either, but that one was probably harder anyway. I'm not riding it off this year, though. See you then. I'm Ryan, and I'm out. Peace.